Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you're new around here, that's cool, me too. This is actually a sister channel to my primary YouTube channel, the Argon Exploration and Advancement channel, otherwise known as AEAC Home. Over there, you will get full in-depth product reviews as well as setup and maintenance guides and around the world event coverage. But this here channel is my opportunity to get in front of you guys slow things down a little bit, and bring you all in on some learning and discovery as I receive these products and make my way towards a full review of them over on AEAC Home. Now this here is the Air Venturi Nomad 2 4500 PSI portable air gun compressor. And I feel like at 650 bucks, this is gonna be a really good solution for a lot of you air gunners. All right, so just to kind of give you a general overview, it only weighs about 19 or 20 pounds, so it's very light. It's small, it's about 10 inches by eight inches by eight inches. And like I said, it's portable and it's versatile, okay? Now, this is gonna work with 110 volt. It's also gonna work with 220 volt. The owner's manual takes you through a process where you remove 12 screws. The cover kind of comes off. You got to be careful because there's going to be some wires attached to these on off switches right here. And then there's a little toggle switch which you can just flip inside and that converts the unit from 110 volt over to 220 volt, right? Now it also works with 12 volt. So what that means to you is if you're at the cabin, you can hook it up to the ATV maybe or if you're out at the farm, you can hook it to the tractor. Or if you're out hunting, you can hook it to the car battery in your truck. And you can use this unit to fill air guns only. It is not designed to fill the big SCBA tanks, you know, those big carbon fiber ones. It's not designed to fill scuba bottles. It's designed to run between 5 and 15 minutes and fill your air gun directly. All right, so let me get you around it around. We'll hit all these sides and I'll share with you what I've learned so far, and then we'll break, and I will get to work making the full review for AEAC Home. All right, now when you look at the front of the unit here, you'll see a little dial here. This is your pressure release, so when you fill up your air gun, you're gonna need to open that up to purge the air between your fill source and your gun before you go disconnecting things. All right, right above it, is um, where the fill whip connects, and it connects just like so with these Quick Connect Foster fittings. You want it oriented like this. You want it oriented with the filter up here by the unit, and then this is the piece that's gonna connect either to your gun or to your fill probe so, you, so that you can fill your gun, all right? Now, there was some confusion initially when I reviewed, or not when I reviewed, but when I interviewed Air Venturi, at a SHOT Show a couple of weeks back as far as what this was, all right? Now they classify this as like a moisture filter, air filter type thing, all right? And what lives in here is a little gauze air filter, okay? You're gonna get five total. You're gonna get the one that comes in here and they're gonna send you four more and you can buy these things at Air Venturi, but what this is supposed to do, whoops, <laughs> What this is supposed to do is keep debris out of your air gun. It also uh, is supposed to trap um, some level of moisture. And the owner's manual says to replace these every uh, two, after every two to three hours of use. Now when you look in here, there's no room for desiccant to absorb moisture, but those things can be purchased aftermarket maybe as some sort of uh, inline filter. To change this, all you gotta do is reach in there with a tweezers or a needle nose pliers and you pull it out. And, um, and you put in the new one. All right, now right above is um, this little guy right here. And what that's called is that's called a burst disc. That's a uh, safety measure that's built into the unit. It does come with a spare. Um, that's what it looks like right there. And it's designed to rupture uh, so that you don't over pressurize this unit or your air gun. I don't know what it's set to. It's probably set around 4,500 PSI because that's the max fill pressure of, um, of this unit. All right, now let's just spin it around here. Okay, now this is the cooling fan for the, the compressor itself. 
Um, there's actually a, a like a power converter in here that will have its own fan, and here's the fan opening for that. And this is the fan for the uh, compressor itself. So this is gonna be running, cooling everything down while you're operating the unit. And right above it is a little fill port for um, silicone oil. Now the owner's manual says that you wanna put two to three drops of silicone oil into the unit about every five or so fills. And the way you put them in is you take your silicone oil. By the way, this does not ship with the gun. This one comes from Crossman. Um, you can buy these uh, in the air gun industry. You can buy RWS makes them, Crossman makes them. You might even be able to go down to your local dive shop and buy it or even to your local hardware store, but you want silicone oil. Now what does ship with the Nomad is this little bottle. So you wanna fill up this bottle and um, use this as kind of like a dropper. And you put two to three drops in here, all right, every uh, five or so fills. And that keeps the whole system kind of lubricated, all right? Now, nothing on this side. Now, over on this side, this is the plug-in for your 110 volt or your 220 volt. This goes right in here like so. And then this will go over into your wall. If you are 220, obviously you're gonna need some kind of conversion, but uh, you can pick that up on, uh, on your end. This down here, this is a, a, a fuse for the entire unit. It does look like it comes with a backup. And then right above the fuse, you're gonna see, or right next to the fuse, you're gonna see a little uh, 12 volt connection. And that is for your 12 volt battery hookup, all right? So it looks like that probably just plugs right in there like so, yep. And then it just pulls right out, all right? And let's see, let's get you looking at the top here. So there's all sorts of cool stuff going on here. Don't mind this little QC tag. So this is the cooling fan for the inverter converter in here that's, that manages that 12 volt, 110, 220 power supply. <clears throat> Over here, this is a dial where you can actually set an auto shut off feature, which means if I own, say, a Benjamin Marauder and that gun fills to 3,000 PSI, I can set this to 3,000 PSI, start filling, and then presumably once it reaches that pressure, the unit automatically shuts off and stops filling. But for good safety measure, that's something you probably want to keep, keep an eye on. All right, it's got a nice carry handle up here. Now this is really interesting. This is called a, uh, at first I thought this was some kind of pressure gauge, but as it turns out, this is a digital load meter. And it's this unit's way of telling you how it's doing as far as its overall temperature, health, lubrication status, if you will, right? <clears throat> so they say when the unit's running healthily, this should be running kind of in the low 20s. It should be giving you a, a display of 21, 22, 23, that kind of thing. But as your silicone oil gets used up and gets purged out of the system, you're gonna see that number start to come up as the load and the temperature starts to, <clears throat> starts to come up. And I believe that um, the owner's manual said once you get to 28, it's time to add your two to three drops of silicone. And once it gets to 29, it's gonna go into like an auto protect mode and it's gonna shut itself, uh, it's gonna shut itself down, all right? Now, um, over here, these are kind of like your on off switches. This first one here is, I, I think of it as kind of like a master. When you hit this, you're gonna hear this little cooling fan for the uh, inverter converter um, start running. And then when you hit this one, once this one's hit, this has to be hit first, okay? Once you hit this one, the compressor is gonna start running. So this is your on off for your compressor. Now a quick note, there's uh, some kind of safety built up in, built into this unit where if you're filling your air gun and you, you, sh you turn off the compressor in the middle of that fill and you go to turn it back on, it's not gonna work unless you first purge the air from the system, kind of go through the power on off reset over here <clears throat> and then start again, all right? So just something to, uh, to be aware of. Now, on the bottom of the unit, there's some pretty cool stuff going on here as well. Let me just set this down. All right, so this here is like kind of like a master drain for the unit. So this does have some sort of internal water moisture separation. I'm guessing there's some kind of reservoir in here. So when you're filling and the condensation builds up, it pools, that water 
will pool in, in, the bot in, in that reservoir. The other thing that will pool in that reservoir is those two to three drips of silicone oil that you're adding about every five or so fills, okay? So the owner's manual says that every, you leave this closed, but every 20 or so fills, you open this up, of course, and you're gonna wanna have some kind of rag, right? Or some kind of paper towel under here. But when you open that up under pressure, it's gonna purge out all of that moisture and all of that oil that's kind of run through the machine to keep it, to keep it lubricated, all right? <clears throat> now, the owner's manual also takes you through a sequence where if, if, you're, if, if you're noticing that the fill times are getting longer or the efficiency of the machine is decreasing, or if you feel like even though when you add your two to three drops of silicone oil every five or so refills, if you feel like your load meter um, is still moving up into the high, tw high 20s and isn't responding, keeping you in the low 20s, there's a, there's a process that the manual takes you through and it, and it says basically you run the compressor and you run it for about three minutes. And every 30 seconds while it's running, you're gonna add two to three drops, okay? Now that's gonna put a lot of oil into the system, all right? Then what you do is you leave it running and while it's running, you open this guy, excuse me, you open this guy up and, and you let it run for like another maybe three to five minutes, of course, in this position. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure all the lubrication is through the machine the way it should be and it's gonna make sure that all of the moisture and all of the oil has kind of worked its way through the system and blown its way out the bottom there. So you guys can think of that as kind of a, um, kind of like a master reset that you just wanna do. Maybe every 20 fills or like again, when the load meter tells you that things aren't working quite, uh, quite as they should be. But back to the bottom here, okay? You've got four rubber feet that come with the unit. They simply unscrew. If you want to make the unit stand taller, um, these rubber feet come with these little um, extension discs, kind of like platform shoes for your Nomad, I guess. All right, so you can, you unscrew these, you just slip them on like a washer and you screw them back and you're a little bit taller. Now this guy right here, this is a, um, it's a light of sorts. It's just like a, a work light, a night light, whatever you want to call it. There's an LED light strip. It shines in blue around here. This is the master on off switch for the light. And that's really um, all it does. Now for the light to work, the power on the unit has to be turned on. And, um, and you'll notice this one's got some cracks around it. Uh, truth be told, I received, this is the second one. The first one I received was also cracked. So I sent it back and this one was too. So my guess is just someone at the factory is getting a little overzealous with the uh, screwdriver, putting too much pressure on this plastic plate and um, you know putting some fractures in this it feels just like plastic. But um, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of the, uh, of the Nomad. Something that, um, that I thought was really cool is it comes with a really nice carry case, right? Uh, Inventory is trying to make this a portable thing that's easy to carry around, right? Because they've made it small and lightweight. They've made it super versatile working with all these different types of electricity. But um, the bag itself is super nice, guys. It's all padded. In the bottom, it's padded on the sides, which kind of surprised me. You'd think it'd just be a canvas bag, but I can feel there's some kind of um, foam protection sewn in between the, the canvas liners here. It's even got a nice little, um, nice little storage up in front where you can keep your fill whip, you can keep your power gourds, all your good, all your spare goodies. And it even comes with a, um, I must have left it in the other room, but it even comes with like a shoulder strap. And on the bottom, like let's say, um, whoops, whoop, there's a shoulder strap. <clears throat> there it is. <laughs> so there's a the shoulder strap. But let's say uh, like at EBR this year, it was pouring one day and uh, it was just water puddled everywhere. It's even got like little rubber feet on the bottom to keep the thing up and out of the dirt and water. So I have to say I'm just incredibly impressed with um, with this thing overall, fit finish quality seems uh, seems outstanding. But um, I'm about to spend the next two or three days learning it more and filming with it, and getting that full review, setup, and maintenance guide done for you that you can look forward to over on AEAC Home. So I think that's it for today, guys. Um, as always, I hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this vid has brightened your air gunning day just a little bit. And I hope to see you again uh, sometime this weekend.